Hi, this is Darren from Imply, and I want to talk to you about data warehouses versus real-time analytics databases. Why would you pick one over another? Now, there's a lot of data warehousing tools out there, so to keep it from being too confusing, I'm going to use Snowflake as an example. And let me make it clear, Snowflake is awesome. Snowflake is a great uh, cloud data platform. It can be used for things other than data warehousing, but we're going to use it as a focus today, which is how most people using Snowflake are using it. it things we say about Snowflake are mostly also true about other data warehouses that you could be choosing. And we're going to talk about Druid. So Apache Druid is an open source real-time analytics database. Again, there's more than one at real-time analytics database, so the things we talk about Druid are mostly true of other real-time analytics databases too. But there are differences between them. I mean, they're both part of analytics. So why would you pick one versus picking another? Well, it boils down to what's the right tool for the job you're trying to get done. And there are some key differences between what I can do with a data warehouse and what I can do with a real-time analytics database. All right, so let's take a look at why you would pick one versus the other. One big question is, what am I trying to do? Am I trying to do reports? Or am I trying to do interactive data conversations? Now, this really gets down to a performance question. Data warehouses are mostly designed for reporting. That means I'm going to run a report once in a while. It might be an annual report or a quarterly report, maybe a daily sales report, maybe a weekly shipping report. But I'm going to be pulling data in, often from many different sources, asking usually complicated questions, and then generating that report. Now, what does that mean? Partly means performance doesn't matter that much, right? If I'm doing my daily sales report, if it takes a minute to run, that's great. If it takes 10 minutes to run, that's great. If it takes an hour to run, that's okay. Because I'm probably running this at like two o'clock in the morning, you know, Sunday through Thursday, so that people during the weekday can take a look at what the daily sales look like. Okay. With real-time analytics, I'm usually doing an interactive data conversation that looks something like this. And as you can see, when I'm doing these kind of interactive conversations, I'm going to be drilling around, drilling down, drilling up, looking through various pieces of data. And this is where the performance really matters, because in order to be able to do interactive conversations, I need to have sub-second response for nearly every query. And if you take a look under the hood when I run these queries, you can see there's a lot of queries running. And they're all running in 100, 200, 300 milliseconds, which is what it takes to do this interactively. If I try to do this kind of interactive stuff with a data warehouse, where I'm usually going to be taking seconds or tens of seconds or minutes to do each of these queries, it's not really interactive. I can't really do that kind of work. OK. That kind of drives into another key difference between the data warehouse and the real-time analytics database. In the data warehouse, I'm really focused in a large degree on low cost. So Snowflake is a great example of this. If we take a look at the Snowflake architecture, and these are all courtesy of Snowflake, you can find these images at snowflake.com, you'll find that there's a lot of things here that are designed to make sure that Snowflake costs as little as possible. All of the storage is on object storage. So things like S3 if you're running on Amazon Web Services or Blob if you're running on Azure or Google Cloud Service if you're running over there, which is really durable and really reliable storage, but it's not fast, which Snowflake addresses with very high parallelism. But still, there's a limit to how parallel you can be. Similarly, all of the compute in the Snowflake world is ephemeral. You turn it on when you run a query, you turn it off when you're done with the query. That makes it a lot less expensive to run, but it also there's a cost there in time because I have to get the systems running. And then, of course, when I turn it off, I lose any caching that I had 
or at least much of the caching that I had. Snowflake has a lot of intelligence in the Snowflake cloud services to preserve some of that cache. So they're able to get good performance at a really low cost. In the real-time analytics world, I'm really focused on a low latency. I'm looking at things that are fast, less than a second. So I'm looking at sub-second response, even on really big data sets. Dozens of terabytes, hundreds of terabytes, petabytes, dozens of petabytes. When I really want to be able to say, I want to be able to do these queries and get my response really, really fast. Now, this does lead to, well, wait, what if I have both needs? What if I'm someone like Netflix, which has talked about this quite a bit? They need to do a lot of business reporting, but they also have some things they need sub-second queries on. Well, you end up with both. And that's pretty common. Most people who have a real-time analytics database also have a data warehouse because these are different tools that I'm trying to address different jobs. And rather than having to choose between do I want a hammer or a screwdriver, well, it may, I have both in my toolbox. I would expect you would too. Still, there's a few other things for any given project that make you think, why would I want to use one versus using the other? And another one that really comes into play here is concurrency. So one of the things about the real-time interactive world and real-time analytics is that it's highly concurrent. And this is important because a lot of the stuff that you're doing with real-time analytics is going to have a lot of people using it. One of the most common use cases for real-time analytics is exposing to analytics to your customers. So you're collecting data and letting your customers run analytics when they want to, which is great and it's a great service, but how many are going to run it? Is one person going to be running an analytic or a thousand or 10,000? You don't really know. So Druid is designed to be able to be very highly concurrent, being able to run hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of queries per second in a single Druid cluster. Snowflake deals with concurrency through clustering or it's called cluster concurrency. So pretty simple in the Snowflake model. When you create your virtual data warehouse in Snowflake, it can handle eight concurrent queries. And if you need more than that, it will go ahead, if you allow it, to grow the cluster. So if it grows the cluster to two nodes, two virtual data warehouses, it can run 16 concurrently. Three can run 24. The maximum size is 10, which can run 80 queries at the same time. Now, the downside of that, of course, is it costs 10 times as much as a single node. But when you're no longer as busy, Snowflake will automatically shut down the extra pieces and get you back down to a lower cost. However, if I'm going to be running a lot of high concurrency and 80 is a pretty good number, in the data warehousing world, it's a really high number. Snowflake is more concurrent than almost any other data warehouse. But if I'm really looking for hundreds, um, thousands, you know, I'm using the wrong tool for the job if I'm trying to do that with the data warehouse. And finally is the question about your tolerance for outages. Now, most data warehouses are going to have to take planned outages once in a while and are going to need backups. Snowflake's an exception. Snowflake, because the way it's designed to be cloud native and it's really using the cloud object store and the other cloud capabilities, you don't need to take planned outages on Snowflake. And they really only have significant outages when the cloud that's li lying underneath it well, fails, which is rare, but there have been big outages by cloud providers once in a while. However, the, the thing that's going to cause me a problem in Snowflake is how it works with a locking mechanism. Snowflake is a great example of a strongly typed database which is what you're used to if you're used to relational databases. This is how Oracle and Postgres and MySQL and SQL Server and so many others work. First, you create a table. And when you create that table, you say, here are the columns in the table, and here's the data type. So this column is a, is a string, this column is a, is a long, this column is an integer, this column is a Boolean, and so on. What if you need to change that? What if the incoming data is different? Well. Then you have to do an alter table statement. And when you do an alter table statement, it locks the whole table. So if you're dealing with large data sets that have millions, tens of millions, billions of rows, 
essentially that table is going to be offline while the alteration is going on, which is kind of disruptive. Snowflake is a great way to do data warehousing, but usually if you're going to be making that kind of an alteration, you're going to use Snowflake tools to clone the table to make another copy of it, and maybe erase the original one in the end. In Druid, totally different way that it puts these together. Because of the way that Druid does segmentation, and because of the way that Druid takes data in, Druid is also strongly typed, but Druid is completely flexible. So when I have, say, a new column that needs to be added, Druid doesn't need to re-index. It just adds that column if you allow it. So you can say, I want to run it like Snowflake works, which is the database is always right. So if the data doesn't fit the database, don't let it in. Or I can run it like a schemaless database, something like a, the way, say, MongoDB works, which says the data is always right. So if I have data that wasn't in the database schema, just add it in. So in Druid, I can use the best of both of those worlds and pick whether I want to have a fixed schema that doesn't change when data changes or a flexible schema that changes when the data changes. So on this side, I have locking. On this side, I have flexibility. Again, depending on your use case, one might make more sense than the other. So what does it really boil down to? If I need some combination of scale and speed and streaming data that lets me have interactive conversations with low latency and high concurrency and flexibility, I probably should be looking to a real-time analytics database like Druid. On the other hand, if what I'm looking to do is run reports at the lowest possible cost, I'm not too worried about the, the high concurrency, and I'm not going to have my data schema change often so the locking isn't a problem for me, Snowflake and data warehouses are a great choice. I hope this has helped you decide which technology you want to use moving forward for your projects. I'll mention if you want to try Druid, the easiest way to get started is to use Imply Polaris, which is Druid Database as a Service. It's a free trial, 30 days, don't even need a credit card. Just go to this website and try the free trial. This is Darren saying goodbye.